Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos. In our last video, we fixed the little glitch that happens for from our back button disappearing. But now what we're going to do is add a full navigation bar. I think this will be a better solution. So we'll go back to our code. And actually, we don't need that uh, data role of add back button anymore. We're going to accomplish something better. So we will not need it at all. So go ahead and remove it from the data role of header. And instead, what we're going to do is add it to uh, add a nav bar. So here's how our nav bar will work. We'll go back to page one, uh, line 11. This is our data role of header. After our page one, we're going to add a new div, a new div pair. This will have a data role data dash role of navbar. Easy as that. Well, not quite. We still have to define each of the buttons. Our buttons will be defined by using unordered lists, also known as bullet points. So we'll add a UL pair. Each list item then has to be defined, each bullet point. So we'll say li slash li, for example, page one. We'll need a page two and a page three. Obviously, these should say something else like home, about, contact, whatever. But um, for our purpose, we'll just make some simple page one, page two, page three buttons. So notice I'm wrapping the list item tag, li, around each list item. All of that is inside of a ul, which are bullet points, and all of that is inside of the div of data role navbar. In order for these to be clickable, they need a link. So we'll add the a tag, anchor, href, and where are we going? Uh, pound first. So we'll need the same thing for page two. The a tag, which defines it as a link. The href, which says where do we go. Pound second. Remember to use the pound symbol when referencing the IDs. Pound third. Make sure everything's spelled right. You can check really fast by selecting the code and first highlights there and there, second highlights there and there, and third highlights there. Okay, it's all spelled right. Save it. Go back to your web browser and refresh. And now we've got a nav bar at the top, page one, page two, page three. It automatically uh, divides itself up among the three elements. And when you roll over, you get rollover effects. We're on page one. Let's click page two. There's page two. Page three. There's page three. So great. Well, there's a few issues, however. Uh, the nav bar does not automatically inherit in all pages. We coded it on page one, therefore it's visible on page one. We didn't code it in page two, so it's not on page two. Also, we didn't define a transition, so we have get the, the default fade. So no problem. We will add some transitions. So data dash roll equals I'm sorry, data dash transition equals quote end quote. We'll do flip. And I just want it to flip on all of them. I like that effect. Save, refresh. Everything looks the same. Click one, flip. Click the next one, flip. They all flip. Nice. And lastly, we'll address, well, this nav bar works on the first page, but now it's missing on the subsequent pages. No problem. Copy and paste to the rescue. So select that whole chunk of code, lines 13 to 19 or so. That's our whole div of data roll nav bar. Copy that. Go to your 
page two data role header paste and then page three data roll header we're on page one we're on page three page two etc On your own, you can see how you can add these icons to the nav bar. They work pretty much the same as the buttons, so you give that a try. Since we don't need those buttons anymore, might as well remove it. But this is adding nav bars to our projects via jQuery Mobile with just a few lines of code and specifying the data role of nav bar.